brilliant idea about my father. Well, good evening, everyone. I uh, really had my doubts as to whether we would be here tonight with all of you. So uh, I'd like to thank all of you, each and every one, for being here. And, uh, of course, all Ryan supporters everywhere, absolutely amazing. We really do appreciate that. And so without further ado, let me introduce, which I know you know her name very well, Kathleen Zillner, who has a few comments she'd like to pass on. So, Kathleen. <laughs> Ryan, so I'm not going to talk too long. Today was just an incredible day because when we got to the prison, I know a lot of you were there, we had planned to take him out. And we went in and I had to hold the piece of paper up on the glass because he didn't know what had happened. He thought they were actually going to put him in the hole today. He thought something was wrong. And so I had to hold up a piece of paper that said, it's over so he could see it, and then we were like trying to talk to each other through the glass. Then they brought him in a room, and we sat in there, and they, he had his clothes that Micah had gotten for him, and so they took him, they put his clothes on him, uh, he wasn't handcuffed, guards were milling around, and then unbelievably, the warden came in and said, we have another court order, you gotta take those clothes off, and put back on your orange jumpsuit. Horrible. Horrible. One of the worst experiences of my life, and I'm sure for him it was just awful. Then we chased him over half of the state back to Boone County. We had to get a judge's <coughs> order. Um, and then when they pulled him into the Sally Port, uh, he again thought he was being rearrested. So here he is to. Uh, tell you how thrilled he is to be free because it was amazing right to the end what a struggle this was. So, Mr.
Maybe. I feel like Jay Leno or something. <laughs> so it's back. People start uh, clapping again. Um, thank you, Kathleen. Uh, yeah, it was a wild day for sure. A lot going on. A lot of emotions. It's been long. And uh, I'm glad that the difficult part is over for sure. Um, in that, I would like to absolutely thank my, my parents, my father, my mother. Seriously, they are the absolute most amazing parents, people, you know, you could ever have. Obviously, you've seen it, you've been following it, and uh, without them, you know, I wouldn't have had any hope. It would have been very difficult. And uh, that goes for my sister as well, who is not here yet. She is trying to get here, but it's taking another couple minutes. So, uh, you know, I just have the most amazing family, and I love you guys so much. Um, also... Some of my supporters who have, uh, you know, my friends who have been there from day one, there's very few of them. And, you know, it's really difficult in the beginning knowing that you're innocent and everyone you knew and talked to, they're not talking to you and you don't know what they think or what they feel. So the people who have been there, uh, you guys know who you are. There's, there's a handful, so um, you can't even really find them all. But you know who you are, and, uh, I mean, I have... So much respect for you guys. It's just, I mean, so much to me. I have a list of other things as well. I knew this would be a little bit too much for me. So, uh, no, definitely uh, also the supporters, everyone who's, you know, written me. Uh, you know, it's it's been amazing seeing the support, and I think it's been very, very helpful to my family. Uh, obviously, my, my you know, parents love it, and it's helped them keep going and helped me keep going. Also, you know, really, I would not be here today, minus my family, and Kathleen Zellner and Doug, I mean, after. Without my attorneys, Kathleen and Doug, I mean, seriously, the work that they've done in the last, was in 2009, has been incredible. And, uh, you know, talking with us and working with us and supporting us and putting in all that time and the effort and the money that they've done, put in to help us, it's, I don't know, it's phenomenal. And uh, clearly, without family and Kathleen's owner and associates, we would not be here today. And justice would not be done. So uh, I appreciate that. I can get back to living my life, although I don't know yet how that'll feel. And this is any indication. It's kind of weird. So, uh, <laughs> and you know, having gone through what I've gone through with our justice system, uh, I was kind of scared about what was going to happen next. Uh, I didn't know this morning that I'd be standing here tonight. I didn't know any anything. I didn't know the next step at all, and it's very scary, very daunting. So, you know, I'm just, I'm very glad to be here, but I want to thank the Attorney General for looking at the facts of this case and making a decision based off those facts and doing the right thing. I think, uh, you know, when you... Very, I don't know, it's got to be crazy at that level, you know, and uh, it's a lot to look at, it's a lot to deal with, so certainly appreciate them. And also the judges who ruled on this, you know, I felt like this is really the first time we've been listened to by the justices, you know, and, and it feels incredible knowing that when we had our hearing, they were actually listening to the facts, they were talking about the facts, and it seemed as though they were going to actually rule on the facts, which to me has been different than what I've seen before. So uh, to Judge Martin, to Judge Witt and Ellis, um, you know, I want to thank them for taking their time and looking at everything and pulling out the facts of this case, the documented facts, and dealing only with those. And so to them, also, a round of applause, please, because that's incredible.
So many incredible people, as you can see, it, it really, to get arrested and to get charged for a crime you didn't commit, it's incredibly easy, and you can lose your life very fast. But to get out of prison, it takes an army, as you can see, and an incredible group of individuals, family, friends, uh, attorneys who are willing to sacrifice so much. And, you know, it's just amazing to be here, knowing that other people are in my situation, don't have the support and the help that, uh, that I've had. So, you know, this is not an anomaly. I think we need to look at other cases and be aware that this is part of our justice system and, you know, there are more innocent people in prison. So keep your eyes open and uh, support them as well, for sure. So, other than that, that's pretty much all I've got to say. Ryan, what's next? What is your first thing on your agenda? Um, I guess that's just like what's next. Anthony asked. Uh, I really don't know. I have I have no idea. You know, I I don't know that I was expecting just to get out and be able to do whatever I wanted. Um, you know, I couldn't look too far into the future. So, like I said, I've been preparing um, for my life from day one. I got arrested. You know, I've been reading and writing and studying and working out and been taking care of myself. So, I'm ready for anything really, and uh, it's whatever my family. What's that? Mayor of Columbia. I, Mayor of Columbia. Mayor of Columbia, indeed. Our next Attorney General. <laughs> yes, that's one of our. I never really got the news. Um, you know, I, uh, as Kathleen said, uh, they told me to pack my stuff up. I thought I was going to ADSEG. I didn't know. You know, there's, there's in prison, there's threats being made on you, and there's a lot of wild stuff going on, things that, you know, you're implicated in. Who knows? So I thought I was getting locked up. I didn't, you know, jail for prison. It's kind of crazy. So when I finally saw Kathleen and... I couldn't talk to her. I was just asking her, like, what's going on? You know, I was asking her if we got bail. And she just held this up. And uh, this, is, this is how I knew what was going on. Ryan, how confused were you today? I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I've been so confused. The last couple hours... They were hard, you know, and uh, whenever I was, I was wearing these clothes and I was standing there with uh, Kathleen and Doug waiting to go and my family was out in the lobby waiting for me. They came in and said, you know, we need you to take your clothes off and put back on this orange jumpsuit and we're going to transport you to Columbia, to Boone County. And uh, when you get transported, you know, you generally have on uh, shackles and everything. So... It's not a good feeling, and you don't know what's going to happen next, and uh, it's incredibly scary. I, you know, I was incredibly stressed out, to say the least. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen next with your life, and uh, and even when I got into Boone County, I didn't know if they're going to try to rearrest me or, you know, it's not over till it's over. You know, it's the same. I mean, it's not too How unique. Would you or... characterize your whole experience from <laughs> How do you? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know if I can characterize a decade, but uh, oppression is a good word for it. Um, it's a struggle, you know what I mean? Pure and simple. It's a struggle, and it's been that way for my family and I. And uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm actually happier for my parents right now than I am for me because, you know, they're, I mean, they've had to deal with so much. So. Yeah. What was the first thing you wanted to eat when you got out of prison? I don't know. I kind of want some Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you're going to have to die. 
Definitely. I, I'm pretty sure he does that more than we know. <laughs> We found out in the car, we were just going in for a visit, and we found out in the car what had happened. So, so we ended up telling him. So he was just coming to a visit with us. He didn't know. But they told him, then they started packing his things up. So he had these two big boxes. With it's incredibly him. complex. Yeah. yeah. To determine exactly how it, how it all plays out, for sure. But he was, like he always is, grace under pressure. Um, this was so, he's so worth the effort of, of what we did, what his parents did. He's just an amazing, amazing person. And even today, <laughs> he's, 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 he's just, he's such a remarkable, come up here. He was such a remarkable person, even today. I mean, most people, even much older, you know, somebody much older, would have just started crying and been upset and been angry, and he didn't. He was like, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll go back in the room. I'll put back on the orange jumpsuit. He's always like that. He's an incredible person. How do you so, do that? That's what I was how do you do that? How do you He's do strong. That I mean, living in prison, you got to stay level-headed, though. If you, uh, if you have letdowns, if you, know, you let emotion take control, then you can be victimized very easily. So, you know, from day one... Uh, my dad always told me, you know, he said, uh, you got to be uh, stronger, faster, and smarter. So do everything you can to make yourself that way. And, and since then, I wrote a book about that, actually. Uh, for the most part, it's mostly done. But it's just about some of my journey. You know, it's not all about prison or anything. But I just wanted to see if I could write a book. And that's, you know, making yourself a better person so that you can survive. And so that when I did get out, I would have opportunities. You know, I didn't want to look back and say I missed five, ten years, how long it took, it took longer than we thought, but uh, I didn't want to get out and still be a 19-year-old kid in my mind, so, you know, I've, uh, I've done everything I can with, with my, the help of my family and, you know, a little hard work, and, uh, and I think, you know, I succeeded. Certainly, certainly, absolutely. Uh, there are so many individuals, I believe, who are, you know, incarcerated wrongfully or have uh, just terrible sentences. You know, it's disproportionate. There's a lot of minors in prison who have been in there over half their life. You know, there's a lot of issues, and uh, there's a lot of people who need help. Uh, number one, as I think Bill already pointed out, was uh, Charles Erickson. I mean, the guy's a lot of things, but the, the thing he is more so than anything else is innocent. So uh, he does not belong in prison. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really get caught up in my feelings towards him. I know that he was used and manipulated, and uh, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. And I know that he's been victimized. He is an innocent man in prison. So, you know, he needs help. He needs uh, support, and you know. He doesn't belong in prison. I don't know anything beyond that, really, and I don't really have any comment beyond that. He's not a killer. He doesn't belong in prison. So. Uh, it looks like you've had seen people from around the world, not just in the state, but the country and the world that support you and thousands of thousands, by the way. What do you feel like have done for people? What do you want to say to those people? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I really wish I knew what to say to those people because they are so incredible and they've helped my family and I so much. I really wish I knew a way to give back to all of them because them being there and supporting us and doing everything they can, they designed the image on my father's car and the billboards and they've sent me so many letters and just so many incredible things that you know we've all appreciated so much that uh, you know, I don't know, their, their help was invaluable and I think that really I think being in prison for a crime you didn't commit, you start to lose trust in society and humanity, and you see a lot of the negative sides of it. But through those people, I was able to see that there are a lot of incredible human beings out there, and that, you know, I, I really want to be back into society with those good people. And, uh, and it makes me look forward to the future, because I know there's a lot of 
really amazing people out there. So it gave me hope in, in humanity, I guess, personally. Thank uh, you so much Roger, for that. There's an unsolved murder out here now. Is there yes. anything you would want to say to Ben Eichholz family tonight? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I can't imagine how they're feeling, but the one thing I would want for them is to be able to look at all the facts and to ask for justice because, you know, they've been lied to by the people they trust and to see them misled by people that they, you know, believe are trying to help them. I can't imagine anything worse than that, really. So, you know, I just hope that they're able to look at the facts, and I hope that everyone is able to ask that justice is done and that they find who actually committed this crime. I mean, that's number one, really. Kelly! Kelly. Come on. going to go to Dairy Queen or ring the bell in front of the courthouse, but we're out of here, okay? Thank you. We love you guys.